Guys, rappers, singers, we need to talk. Before we get into this, I just want to let you know we have made some changes to the camera, so this is somewhat of a test run episode, but there is a ton of value that I think you guys will have from this. This is for all my artists and creatives. I want to give you guys a license. I give you permission to sound like somebody else in your songs. I repeat, I give you permission to sound like another artist in your music. I don't know why, but hip hop and recording arts has been a lo- been around for many a decade, and yet we still try to act like there's something new under the sun. Plus, we disregard the natural process of recording and artistry. I don't care if you're from the 80s and 90s of the era of boom bap and the introduction to some of the renaissance rap that you've heard. If you took the kids of that day who were trying to emulate those rappers and singers and you looked at how they patterned themselves and what type of artists they were, you would be able to be like, yo, that guy sounds like Eminem, that guy sounds like Rakim, that guy sounds like Jadakiss, that guy sounds like Kanye, that guy sounds like 50, that guy sounds like Snoop a little bit, that guy sounds like a little bit of Dre mixed with a little bit of E-40. Like, people copy people. It's the karaoke effect. If you see a skateboarder doing Ollie, What will you eventually have to do? The ollie. And what percentage of that trick will look somewhat like the person you saw? Probably most of it. Same thing with rapping and singing. When you're starting out and you don't have a lot of tools to work with, it always starts with a fascination to duplicate something that you're seeing. And so I think oftentimes we're so quick to rush in and preach the, you need to be unique, you need to find your voice, you need to da 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 And we disregard that natural part of the process so much so to where the artist is sitting there like, well, what am I supposed to just sit here and think up uh, the uniqueness of myself? When that's not really how it goes. I don't care if you're boom bap, I don't care if you're trap, I don't care if you're trying to be Beyonce, or you're doing R&B, or you're trying, even if you're trying to do something revolutionary and quote unquote new that you think is different and has never been done before. You have to copy artists that inspire you. And along the way, when you start to copy that style, and it doesn't mean you copy them where You record the music how they record it and try to put it out and monetize. We're not talking about pirating and stealing music. We're talking about the natural process of beginning and progressing in the arts. You have to pick things that you've seen and you like. You're not going to, nobody goes and sees something that they're inspired by and then just comes up with a revolutionary style. And I think sometimes we get it confused because there's kind of two things that happen. One, a lot of the rappers and singers who we see in the game who are like iconic and stuff naturally have very unique voices. If you come in the game and you have a super unique voice, that has nothing to do with you finding your voice. You just have a naturally unique voice and people gravitate towards it But that doesn't mean you refined a sound in particular. It's almost like people who have a unique voice get like a free pass. You think of guys like Jadakiss, Wayne, Eminem, Busta Rhymes. I mean, these people just have voices where you just want to hear them talk. DMX. Like, so I think we hear people like that and we associate that with finding your creative voice when it's like these people just have a naturally dope sounding voice and they get to focus on other stuff, but they get accepted a lot earlier because, oh, if they have something unique in their tone, oh, they sound seasoned, oh, they sound edgy, oh, they sound dope and captivating. And that's not always the case. It's just people are fascinated with unique sounding voices. It's There's an intrigue and an interest there. But by and large, most people are going to sound like other people. Um, And I think people just get robbed of that process so much and they act like they don't do it themselves. Again, it's, 
I don't care if, if, if we're talking about the rappers, the singers, whatever, everybody needs to copy everybody and get inspired by something. And they need to try and emulate it in practice, karaoke it, memorize lyrics, learn the cadence. There's so many elements to what makes a creative voice. And I want to talk about them. So the way in which you learn to find creative voice is first and foremost understanding that you have a story to tell. Um, you have intentions and a relationship with the music that is in subtle ways different from the next artist and the next group of artists. And so you need to embrace your intentions with the music more, whether that's your story, whether that's your connection to the music, whether that's your interests, you need to learn to lean all in into that connection. And the more that you sincerely do that, other than the emulation process, you will begin to find where you differ from other artists and where you want to put your creative spin and creativity to use. Secondly, you have so many tools available to you. I mean, I'm just going through some of them off top. You have song selection, you have instrument selection, you have uh, genres to pick from. You can deconstruct music that's already out and break it down. You can remix music that's already out. Then when we talk about vocal arrangements, you can mess with cadence and flow and negative space and fast and slow tempo. There are so many different tools with this art making that we call music where it's like the more you acquire, the more fundamental tools and elements of song making that you not only recognize but practice and try them out, it's like paintbrushes. The more paintbrushes you kind of put in your jar that you <clears throat> have refined and that you know how to use, which takes the art making, you have to actually do use them and fail and grow to cultivate how strong your brushes are. And then over here, you're in this journey of being intentional with your music, picking what you love, seeing what you're connected with, what are your desires with the music, maybe even your story, how might your story influence the music. When you tie the way you choose to use the tools to, to express your intent and desire with the music, that is what is actually creative voice. It's not just something you wake up with. It's not just something that you focus on one thing and practice, 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 and it, and it becomes. It's a journey of picking up and putting down tools, refining tools, and having a very sincere inward look at your connection with the music and seeing what you would like to do with it and being daring enough to try a lot of things. And eventually, you start seeing what stuff naturally grows, what stuff naturally progresses. Some people stop at the first connection they make because it's such a strong connection, you know, the paintbrush they chose or the beat they chose with this type of flow or this type of singing. And then they just duplicate that over and over and over and over and over. And it's like when you listen to a whole album, the only thing that really ever changes is the beat. The, the artist's connection to the song often sounds like you left the room and then you walked back in and gave the same conversation. And so I think a lot of people kind of hang their coat <clears throat> on their first sign of success. And that's understandable because a lot of times when people experiment, uh, people don't like that. They, they, people like ramen noodles. Like if they have the ramen, they say, hey, bring me the same pack of ramen, beef flavor, beef flavor, beef flavor every single time. And they don't want to change. Um, they're, they, they like, to, they don't like the risk of possibly hearing something they're not connected with and they're very self-centered in that regard. And so you have to be daring and you have to be willing and a lot of people don't jump that ship. They kind of play it super safe uh, either for financial reasons or for like inward insecurity with like maybe your listeners might go down, uh, maybe you might have to find a new audience, things like that. But I think it also really comes down to what you want to do as an artist. You know, what is your goal? And that'll determine the amount of risks you take and how refined as an artist you get. But it is a journey and the creative voice doesn't happen overnight. Some people have been in the game for 20, 30, 40 years, 40, 
Yeah. Some artists have been in the game for almost 40 years, if not more, and are still finding their creative voice every day. But it's they're, they've embraced that part of the journey. They realize that. And some people have become really good at the, the relationship between trying new things, refining things they've already learned, and then being very intentional with their connection and their intentions with the music. And that marriage has cultivated over time into some brilliant ideas that you get to hear uh, in their creativity. So I hope that helps you guys. That's just really one piece of it. I might elaborate on this, but definitely, you know, when people you've only been in the space for five or 10 or less years and people are still harping on you about now here's one thing self-awareness is huge but perspective is also don't be the guy that gets no opinions or listens to a couple of opinions and because you don't agree with them you're like oh see i this is why i always needed to just believe in myself and just believe my way through it i see a lot of people that sit in their studio and just self-create and they really believe in what they do but they lack perspective remember at the end of the day you're trying to give your music to people and it isn't a selfish thing it's a connection and if you don't acknowledge that connection yet you hope that your creativity somehow builds a connection with somebody just because you're creative you know you're you're shortchanging yourself like crazy and the and the fans are going to let you know you know very rarely can somebody just self cultivate completely block out all outward relationship and then somehow build a connection that almost never happens um but so so again there's a balance have perspective and get a diverse range of perspective and continually be in that community of having the ability to discover that about yourself, things you might have left out, things you weren't considering, uh, perspectives from other artists who are just as great at what they do as you, um, to get a well-rounded perspective of where you might be in your journey and what you should change in terms of your thinking and your your path. But then the other thing is, is you have to really know when you know. Like there's gonna be times when people tell you stuff, a lot of people might tell you something and you just need to block it out because you really believe in something, but don't disregard that process. Still put yourself out there and then make the decision afterward after you have a well-rounded perspective perspective of the situation and a healthy view of whether or not you're making the right decision or you're just being closed-minded. So, I hope that helps with, you know, finding your creative voice. It's okay. There's so many people in the music space now that sound like other people, and I think that's okay. Just don't be the guy who stays there. You know, over time, you should start to sail away and that creative voice should start to crystallize where you now, now your silhouette is painted. People know when they hear you, they hear the nuances and the differences where it's like, okay, this is why he's different. And be willing to take that risk and try those things and lean in on yourself. You'll be surprised what what kind of peace inside that'll bring you because now you know that your art is a product of like real expression and real intent from inside and it's not just an a fear of like well this is the music i think they want to hear from me so i'm just going to give it to them and my heart's really not in it um don't don't be a fool you know be be daring i've always said this and we'll end with this i think personally that the greatest artists that i enjoy listening to seem to be able to convey a nice 50-50 split of refinement and skill on one side of the fence, but also the other half being exploration. I get the sense that this artist is trying to do something different. They're trying to find something. They're trying to discover something in their music that they haven't done. And the juggle between the refinement and skills that they've already gotten good at and the world of exploration, when that comes together, it creates some great music that has real movement, real challenge, real color, a real vibrance to it, and I can feel that in the music. No matter how simple, no matter how deep, it's something that can just be felt on the inside. Wow, this artist is on a journey, and this music that I'm hearing is a product of, I can hear the journey, I can see it, it, it I can feel the movement, I can, I'm connected to more things than just what's what's going on. So 
Um, we, I, I would imagine most people would like to be an artist like that. Uh, but if you don't, that's cool too. This is just my perspective. Hope you guys have a wonderful night. Hope this helped you guys out with your art making. If you have any questions or any insight, I'd love to hear your feedback. Until next time, peace.